M1 Macs are blindingly fast. Music to simulation folk, who really want speed, but until recently it was far simpler to build and use ESPR on Intel Mac than for an M1. We'll talk about that process in another video. This video is for folk who prefer to host Linux within a macOS and run ESPR as if they were on a Linux computer. And we're going to do it all by way of free tools. We're going to start with an environment called UTM. It lets folk with Macs run various other operating systems virtually or by way of emulation. And you can find out more about UTM on this web page. So you can see the process, we will set up a new Ubuntu. And one of the first issues is whether to go virtualize or emulate. If the Linux available for an M1 Mac is also ARM64, the same class of processor used in an M1, then we can use the virtualize approach and should get reasonable performance. Let's have a quick look at the various operating systems on offer and there is an Ubuntu for ARM64. Let's go with that. If we click on it, there's a guide. And in the downloads, the entry for ARM is this server version. We want the speed, so it only takes a couple of additional steps to upgrade the server to a desktop environment. There is a 2204 LTS version and a 2210 version. Let's go with a newer one. What gets downloaded is an ISO file. Later we will find that file in our Downloads folder. To continue, we need to switch focus back to UTM and choose Virtualize and then Linux. And at the bottom is a Browse option. Click on that and navigate to your Downloads folder. Select it and click on the Continue button. There's some setup that needs to be done. The default memory is four gigabytes. If your M1 has 16 gigabytes, then you might want to up that considerably. Toggle the number of cores to two. The suggested initial disk size is 64 gigabytes. Shrink or expand that to match your likely workflow. Resizing may or may not be a hassle later on. I simply haven't yet tried it. You're offered to share a folder with OS X, and it might come in handy for quick file transfers. There's an option to review the status of what's going to be set up and give a name to the new OS. You should see a new entry in the UTM interface. Click on the circle arrow to start it up. Because we started with the server version, everything will be in text mode. Not to worry, we can sort that later. The first task is to install Ubuntu Server. You're taken through a series of questions, navigate with the up, down, left, right arrows, and hit return to select. The bottom of the display was cut off, so, well, there's a continue button underneath and a go back button that's hidden from view. We want to check the Ubuntu Server and the third party driver boxes. The network connection section is somewhat opaque. It seems to work if you highlight and right arrow on the DHCP item to display info. And at some point, a little cursor will start spinning. And then it's possible to continue. If you're confused about this, have a look at other UTM videos on YouTube. For storage, let's use the entire disk. It will echo the arrangement of the disk partitions. Accept these unless you have strong opinions. You're asked to con for confirmation before you fill up the new virtual disk. Include your name and password. Remember that if you forget it, it's probably easier to start from scratch. Open SSH is good to have. It will then set to work. When it finishes, when it finishes, you need to restart. Probably best to issue a command such as sudo reboot.
When the initial grub menu comes up again, select boot from next volume. And you're greeted by a login. Type in your new username and the password and it will display a summary of the system. Now it's a good time to reboot. Our first task is to issue a few commands to make sure that Ubuntu is fully up to date. Just follow the prompts shown on the screen. This will chatter for some time as it downloads and installs stuff. Another set of commands up installs a display manager as well as a window manager. In this case, I chose Mate. You can make your own choice. At the end of the process, reboot, and you'll come into a graphical user interface, which has the usual stuff in the usual places. And you can proceed to set it up. And now we have a Linux box which is ready for installing and building simulation software on.